The Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Latifah Bimi SEN, has filed a lawsuit on behalf of the federal government with the Supreme Court against the 36 state governors, seeking full autonomy for local governments. The suit, which is based on 27 ground, argues that Nigeria, as a federation created by the 1999 Constitution, has the president as the head of the federal executive branch, who is sworn to uphold and implement the provisions of the Constitution. In the suit which accused the state governors of gross misconduct and abuse of power, the AGF sued them through their respective state attorney generals. He urged the apex court to issue an order prohibiting state governors from unilateral, arbitrary and unlawful dissolution of democratically elected local government leaders. We're joined this morning by the Executive Director, Sterling Law Center, Deji Ajari. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, this is a call that many have clamored for for years. Uh, is it happening a little too late, this call? And what are your hopes that this will have any positive impact or will yield any positive result? Well, um, I, I, I can't say really that it is too late because uh, democracy generally is like some sort of experimentation. Um, you take steps, you see how it works. If it works for you, you retain it. If it doesn't work, you go back and then modify it. And I think we have experimented in allowing the states for so many years, you know, have control of the local governments uh, through the state's independent, ele or independent electoral commissions. And the, 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 Well, it seemed to be um, struggling with the connection there. But, of course, the conversation is on the Nigerian government uh, taking the 36 state governors to court to challenge them and, of course, and seek full autonomy for the local government. And these are some of the things that we're going to be talking about. The Section 7, uh, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution guarantees the establishment of democratically elected local governments. What we've seen for a long time in Nigeria is the complete um, um, ignoring of that section of the constitution, and we see state governors instead appointing local government chairmen without a proper election, you know, with, you know which they should be appointed. We've seen uh, state governors in Nigeria, you know, taking full control of funds that should be allocated to local government. And we're talking about hundreds of millions of naira every month that should be um, taken to the local government. We, of course, you know, see this, you know, as the reason why local governments across Nigeria seem to be failing and not being able to handle their responsibilities by themselves. Unfortunately, local government chairmen don't seem to be complaining. Instead, it is the federal that seems to be taking, you know, this upon itself. Deji Ajari, good morning once again. Can you hear us? Well, I'm clear. Thank you. All right. We, we apologize. We had an um, issue with the connection. All right. So go on with your thoughts, you know, and then I, I also want you to speak on you know, the AGF, of course, is quoting the 1999 Constitution. I want you to speak with regards to that. Does the Constitution fully guarantee the establishment of local government? And why do you think that we have instead of seen a situation where state governors, you know, decide on whether they would have local government or not, or whether, you know, they would handle the funds of local government or not? Thank you. So, like, like I was saying earlier, I don't think it is too late. It is an experimentation. We have realized that it is not working. And, I mean, clearly, the, the state governors over the years have uh, abused the uh, uh, independence of the local government, clearly, administratively, and in terms of their finances. And so this is very, a very welcome development, and we must all commend it. And, of course, you, uh, you mentioned the fact that... Um, it appears like even the local governments themselves are not complaining, and it is more like the federal government that is complaining. I'll tell you why. It's simple. The local governments um, uh, uh, have become mere appendages of the states of the states. Now, why do most of the most of the uh, states currently do not have local government chairmen elected, local democratically elected local government chairmen? So, what you have is a situation where the governors have either, I mean, appointed their friends, cronies, and boys into office as caretaker chairmen or transition committee chairmen, mayors, and whatever name they call them. So these people are loyal to the governor, and they know that the governor can, by just a snap of his finger, remove them from office. And so, naturally, you find that, in fact, they are the ones who seem to be crying that, look, they do not want that autonomy. But you will see that 
the action filed by the Attorney General of the Federation is two pronged. It's asking for two major uh, 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 reliefs. One is that the finances of the local government authorities must be independent. In, that, in other words, that they, they are, they are, their dues will be paid directly from the Federation account. Secondly, they are also asking that the Supreme Court should make a declaration that the local government, that the state governors do not have powers and not arbitrarily uh, uh, dissolve elected local government authorities. And I think uh, perhaps this is something we'll also now start to look at. Now, when you're talking about Section 7 sub 1 of the Constitution, it clearly makes provision for the existence and independence of the local government authorities. And so, having recognized three tiers, the federal, the state, and the local government, there is no constitutional basis, there is none in any democratic setting for one arm of the government to arbitrarily liquidate the other arm of the government. Imagine oh. that in the absence of a state of emergency, the federal government simply declares that a governor, a gov the governor of a state ceases to be a governor and All takes right, over that state. That is exactly what the state governors are doing with the local government. All right, we'll come, we'll come back to continue with this line of thought, uh, Mr. Jari, but just hold on. Let's run this quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, we're still, of course, uh, looking at exactly what the federal government is doing regarding uh, taking the 36 governors to court, talking about the autonomy of the local government. And we're joined by the Executive Director, Sterling Law Center, Deji Ajari. Thank you very much for staying with us. Now, before we went on the break, you talked about the situation that is reflect, uh, evident in certain states where there, there isn't a democratically elect, elected local government. Now, reports having that as at May 2024, FAC has announced the allo uh, allocation of about 1.2 trillion naira for the month of May. And of course, every of these states is expecting their funds to be sent to them. Whilst we know that there's immunity clause that protects governors whilst they're in office, are we expecting that when their time in office is done? Because from what we're seeing in this suit and from what you are also seeing, a number of them have been collecting these funds, even though there is a constitutional provision that the local government should be, that should sort of enable the local government be independent. Is there an expectation that when their time in office is done, they would come and account for what exactly they did to those monies? That is for the states that do not have democratically elected local governors, local government uh, in them. Yeah, you and I know how things pan out eventually when governors uh, leave office and lose their immunity. There's a lot of politicking that goes around, people shout, Wanting and a lot of that, and of course, you cannot also discount the the failings or failure of our uh, uh, to graft agencies to properly you know, investigate and prosecute these governors. So most of the time, they either get away totally with whatever they have done while they are in office, or they just go away with a slap on the wrist. But most importantly, is that you have a lot of emotions coming into it. Currently, the former governor of Kogi State. He's been, I mean, I, mean, I mean, there's an attempt to prosecute him, and you know, you can see all of the drama that is going on around that. So it, it's more difficult to come at the end to take them. I think it is better to actually prevent the graft from happening from the very beginning. And that is the reason we must commend the federal government from taking this step. And you must also understand why the federal government is the step. You see, Nigerians have a problem. We have a way of looking at every governance issue from the prism of the federal government. Everybody, when schools, when teachers are not paid, everybody blames the federal government. When um, healthcare is not in place, everybody blames the federal government. In fact, for every off road, the roads we have across the country, everybody blames the federal government. Meanwhile, the bulk of these governance issues are actually at the local and the state level. And so you would understand why the government, federal government has taken it upon itself to ensure that look, things are done properly at that level so that the benefits of governance can actually trickle down to the people. The people can feel it at the local, at the most local level, because it is only when that happens that people can also now heal the, I mean, the entire system of governance that hey, the government of the federation is doing well. So I think I understand why the federal government is truly determined to ensure that these democratic principles that ensure uh, autonomy for the local government is uh, conferred. Every attempt in the past that have been made have been frustrated by the governors. You remember, I think in 2019, President 
Buhari uh, signed an executive order which was supposed to confer full autonomy to the local government. It was the local government uh, the, the chairman themselves that were protesting. And um, I think in 2023 uh, as well, just last year, there was an attempt to, to I mean, during the, uh, the constitutional amendment process, to introduce a bill to fully, you know, to clearly uh, uh, expatiate on the autonomy of the local government. This was also frustrated by the states. So this is a very welcome development because once the Supreme Court makes a pronouncement in that regard, I think it becomes full and final. It becomes the final uh, situation, since, uh, position. Yeah, you know, but I, I think, you know, we, we still need some clarity as to the confusion concerning the NFIU directive President Barry gave in 2017 or 2018. I remember that in 2019, the governors once again challenged, you know, that directive, um, asking that the um, the state funds, uh, the, of course, local government funds be sent directly to the local government. They challenged it, saying that it was against the Nigerian constitution. So can you help clarify exactly what the constitution says? Um, is there provision, you know, for which the funds for local government affairs be sent directly to the local government? The NFIU directive by President Buhari, was, it, was he wrong to have given that directive? And, of course, you know, the state government's right, saying that, you know, the president was wrong. Funds, you know, should be controlled by the states. Now, Section 7 sub 1 of the Constitution says... The system of local government by democratically elected local government councils is under that under the constitution guaranteed, and accordingly, the government of every state shall ensure their existence under a law which provides for the establishment, structure, composition, finance, and functions of such councils. Now, the the I think if we want to give any interpretation to this section seven sub one of the constitution, which will give the state governors, the powers to distribute funds accruing to the local governments to them. I think that would automatically mean that we are taking away the actual essence of democracy. Because the actual essence of democracy is that people should be able to elect people who will represent them. They elect those to represent them at the federal level, but for the, the executive and the legislature, the same thing for the state. So why can't they enjoy that same privilege for the local government le level, which is actually the closest level of governance to the people? So any interpretation that the state governors are giving to this section that takes away the autonomy of the local government must definitely be condemned by every well-meaning Nigerians. And I think that is the reason the interpretation by the Supreme Court is very, very germane and important. Yeah. Of course, it is going to be very difficult to have any uh, uh, amendment that would bring more clarity to that uh, section because the governors will necessarily frustrate it. And this comes to the point where that some of us are already making about the, the desire to introduce state policing constitution. The moment you have it in the constitution, we're going to experiment. If it doesn't work, if it is abused and we want to go back, it becomes impossible because the governors will frustrate yeah. it. So would you, would, you say we, would you say we need a Supreme Court ruling or a constitutional amendment? I think if the Supreme Court makes clear interpretation of what the imports or the intent of this section of the Constitution is, it becomes the law. All right. There is no need for any further amendment. It becomes the law. There will right. be no need for any further amendment. DJ Ajari, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.